Hello, everyone. Welcome to Into Sports. I'm your host, Evan, and today we are going to be talking college football as this weekend is the start of the conference championships. So I'm going to be previewing the Power 5 uh, conference championships, making my predictions along with the keys to the game. And let's start with the Pac-12. That game is at 7 o'clock tonight, which is 30th of November. It is currently two hours before then I'm recording. So I got to put this one in quick. It's number 11 Washington versus number 17 Utah. Washington is five point favorites with an over under of 43 and a half points. I'm going to take Washington 26 20. Um, Jake Browning, he's uh, very experienced, along with Miles Gaskin, both seniors, the keys to that offense. Overall, Washington's more experienced, and Miles Gaskin, the running back for Washington, he's had four straight, four straight 1,000 yard seasons on the ground. I expect him to play very well tonight, although this is a very strong Utah defense. That is what I think will keep Utah in this game. I don't think Washington will run away with it, but Utah doesn't have a prolific offense themselves, so I think Washington will get the edge in this matchup just because of the experience, the quarterback, and the running back combination. Now let's go to the Big 12. Number 14, Texas, playing number 5, Oklahoma. This game is at 12 o'clock. On Saturday, Oklahoma's eight-point favorites with a 77.5 point over-under. The last game was 43.5 point over-under. This is 77.5 points. Expect points to be scored in this game. My pick, 54-51, to Oklahoma. You see what it's going to be. Oklahoma plays absolutely no defense. They allow 33 points a game. They just gave up 40 to Kansas. Kansas. I mean, we're not talking about basketball. This is 40 points in football, and that's Kansas football. So that gives you a good idea of how good the Oklahoma defense is. But on offensively for Oklahoma, they average the most yards per play in college football history. Nine yards per play. Granted, they play in the Big 12, and really no one plays defense in that division, in that conference. But still, 9 yards per play? That is ludicrous. That is ridiculous. And that's exactly what we're going to see on Saturday. The last time these teams met, Texas won 48-45. to There's no way that this game scores like under, under 70 points. There's no way. And each team has elite wide receivers for Oklahoma. C.D. Lamb and Marquise Brown, and for Texas, Lil Jordan Humphrey, one of the best names in college football, and Colin Johnson. I expect each of those each of those guys to have monster games against weak secondaries on the opposing sides of the field. For Oklahoma, you got Kyler Murray, who has thrown more yards, more touchdowns than Tua Tagovailoa himself. He's number two in my is my Heisman race. And expect him to have a monster game. Sam Ellinger on the other side for Texas. Expect him to have a monster game against his weak defense. It's just going to be a matter of who has the ball last, who scores the, who wins the, the time of possession. Because, like, every every series is just going to be a touchdown. Like, there might not be any punts in this game. Might not be any punts in this game. Actually, I'll make that my bold prediction. For this game. Just a little fun prediction there. Now let's move on to SEC. We got number one Alabama taking on number four Georgia. This is at four o'clock tomorrow. Alabama's 13 and a half point favorites. The over under 63 and a half points. Not quite as much as a Big 12 game, but mm, well, that's it's 13 points under that. I have Alabama winning 35-23. So, I actually have Georgia against the spread, but I have Alabama winning outright. My key points, the key matchup in this game, I think, is going to be Elijah Hollyfield and DeAndre Swift, the Georgia running backs, versus Mac Wilson and Dylan Moses, the Alabama linebackers. Georgia's going to have to score points to win this game because all my notes say Tua is great 
And that's all you need to know. Alabama's going to score points. And it's just going to be about Georgia trying to keep pace. I mean, Georgia does have a great defense. But Alabama's offense is otherworldly. So it's going to be that running back versus linebacker matchup. It's going to be getting Mikal Hardman, Terry Godwin, and Riley Ridley shots down the field. They're going to, uh, Jake Fromm's going to need to really air it out. And they're going to need to get Mikal Hardman in space. He's their wide receiver who's best. Who's, he's quick. He's elusive. And if Kirby Smart can find ways to get Mikal Hardman in space, this game could be very competitive. But in the end, I believe that the Alabama offense will score more points. They're just better than the Georgia offense. I trust Tua. I trust Damian Harris. I trust the backs. I trust the wide receivers. Specifically, Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs. But I I really trust everyone on this Alabama offense, including the offensive line. But I do expect this game to be competitive. Alabama, I don't think this is going to be one where they run away with it. Tua will have to play in the fourth quarter. Unlike most of the games, most of all the games this season. He's he's only played in the fourth quarter like once or twice, which is unbelievable. I mean, who would have thought that Jalen Hurts, without a, a Tua injury that keeps him out of games? He, he did have an injury, but he started the next game. Who would have thought that Jalen Hurts would account for a few games worth of playing time? Two elite defenses, two elite offenses. This should be a good game down in Atlanta. Big Ten, Ohio State, number six, versus Northwestern, number 21 ranked. This game is at 8 o'clock. Ohio State is 14.5 point favorites with a 61 point over under. Points will be scored in this game also. And my pick is 45-31 Ohio State. I have the, my score is significantly higher than the 61 point over under. I have 76 points. So I'm definitely taking the over there. But Dwayne Haskins has been phenomenal this year, specifically against Michigan. And speaking of the game against Michigan, this Ohio State pass rush really got to Shea Patterson in that game. I expect them to get after Clayton Thorson in this one. In Ohio State, they're a top three talented team in the country, no doubt about it. But they just haven't looked like themselves in the middle of the season. But I think they finally have it figured out. I think that they'll be in the college football playoff ultimately. And I have them, like I said, winning this game by 14 points. But to me, the Michigan game really saved their season. And the game before that, when they played Maryland, that went into multiple overtimes. That was a ridiculous game. Very high scoring. J.K. Dobbins, the Ohio State running back, 37 carries for 203 yards. I mean, that is ridiculous. We'll see a heavy dose of him uh, Saturday night. And for Northwestern, Clayton Thorson needs to expose this Buckeye secondary to keep pace with Haskins and the Buckeyes offense. Ohio State secondary is pretty weak, and Clayton Thorson, I believe in him as a quarterback. He's one of the best pure throwers, I think, in the country. So I expect uh, Northwestern to put up points, 31 to be exact. But they just won't keep the pace that Ohio State will be on this game. So I like Ohio State in this one. Now our final Power 5 Conference Championship. It is in the ACC. We got number 2 Clemson going against unranked Pitt. This game is also at 8 o'clock. So might have to do some recording if you guys are watching. Or you might have to just choose one or switch back and forth. Clemson is 27.5 point favorites. Yeah, maybe you're just going to choose the Ohio State game because this might not even be close. 53 point over under. That does not signal a lot of points for Pitt at all. My pick, 48-20 Clemson. Travis Etienne, the Clemson running back, will completely eviscerate this Pittsburgh uh, defensive front. Pittsburgh just lost 24-3 to Miami. Miami's not even a good team this year. They had high, high hopes coming in, but I mean, they flopped. And they just lost by 21 points. They only scored three points last week. So I don't even think that Clemson will need Trevor Lawrence to do do anything, any kind of passing this game. He'll just be on ETN on the ground because he'll have a very cozy lead the whole way through. And this one, not going to be very competitive in my opinion. 
So Clemson will blow out Pitt. And although, although, I'd like to give Pittsburgh a little bit of respect because I like their coach, Pat Narduzzi. I like what he's done there. And Pittsburgh, they're pretty good. They're a pretty good team, but they just have to play Clemson. I hope you guys did enjoy today's podcast where we previewed the uh, five big conference championship games. Maybe drop a subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a very nice day, everyone.